Hi folks, Craig Siriani, Craig Siriani Vocal Studios. I wanted to do a different video today. Uh, this one has to do with something I haven't done a video on yet. Um, metering the jaw or controlling the jaw opening, depending on what kind of effect you're looking for um, in the music and in the singing. Uh, before we get started, uh, my usual disclaimer, okay? This has to do with the technique that I used and I sang with for 25 years, La Monaco's technique. Um, but I think in a lot of ways it also applies to the Maloki singers as well. Um, but again, this applies to people who want to sing big, who want that big old school sound, that big technique. This is for you guys, okay? Um, now, initially Tom, well, Maestro La Monaco, we all called him Tommy. Uh, initially, Tommy all started us with a very, very hyper extended jaw. That was the beginning of the training. Why? Because we were wound tight as a drum. Sound familiar? Yeah, bad university teaching, bad private teacher teaching, whatever. I don't know. Or that misguided notion that, that's been still propagated that, you know, you just stand on stage and go and smile and hold your hands like this and Nesundorma comes flying out of your throat. Hopefully you all know that at this point, folks, it, it does not work that way. It will never, will never work that way. And yes, I've heard all of the comments about, well, if you hyperextend your jaw, you know, aren't, aren't you creating some kind of tension on your own? No, that's my answer, no. The reason Lomonaco had the jaw so hyperextended was to break the facial tension that you walked into the studio with. That's why he did that. So no, it doesn't create tension. It eliminates it. Again, as far as I'm concerned and as far as my technique goes. Um, and if you don't agree with any of this, I completely get it. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. I'm entitled to mine. You don't need to write me any nasty comments if you don't like the video, I totally get it. It's fine. Okay, it's fine. My book's full, so I'm good. Um, you know, what this unfortunately has invited is the faulty conclusion that all Lamonico type or Maloki type singers, you know, the old school singers, always sang this way, big, scary, overly opened, overly, you know, overly distended jaw, and that just isn't the case. It's just not. Um, I mean, and you can see this if you watch any videos of any of the older, the really good, older, old school tenors. Okay, I'm not talking, I'm talking go back. Um, and if you look on YouTube, of course, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll always find some misinformed, you know, armchair critic, I like to call them. They want, they love to pontificate about what they, feel as the, you know, Italian eight or, or, or the real true Italian style. And then invariably they all do the same thing. They resort to some kind of, uh, idiotic imagery like, oh, well the voice, you know, you should never, you know, use the chords as a valve because the voice should float like air bubbles while you're singing. I, don't ask me. I don't know. Uh, pull the string. Pull the string out of your head when you're singing that high note. Uh, I, don't get me started, okay? I've seen it all, folks. I really have. Um, and most and pretty much none of it works. Uh, and ironically, these are always the guys that never had a big stage career. They're the they're the most vociferous of all of them on YouTube. Uh, so here's the disconnect. Here's why I wanted to make this video. Because if you don't train forte first and big, okay, then, and, 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 and in so doing, develop and maintain that power, then you won't have that in your arsenal. It's easy to understand this concept if you, if you reverse the process. Say you're with a teacher, could be your teacher right now, who's encouraging you to close your jaw, uh, pull your voice back, sing softer, sing softer, ooh, right? Uh, 
But take that same singer, put them on stage. The conductor says, listen, I need a little bit more sound out of you than that. What are you going to do? Nothing. Because you haven't been trained that way. So you got nothing. Now flip it back around again, okay? We didn't sing every note like that. We didn't spend all night long like that on stage. Sure, we did it for high notes because it works. It still works. But the last thing that Tommy taught me was how to meter the jaw or close it down a little bit. And this applies not only to some high phrasing, but again, a lot of the tenor arias that start very, very low. You don't want to have the jaw hyperextended. You want to be, you know, relatively kind of half jaw. Remember that, remember that great video Papadotti put out a long time ago? Uh, it was with Joan Sutherland. He was demonstrating, you know, how he covers. And you see, when he goes to the F, he'll close his jaw a little bit. Um, he wasn't, you know, wasn't that far off. I, I understand that. Um, so, some musical examples. Uh, Tosca comes to mind. Now, there's a funny, kind of funny story behind that, but I did my very first, my very first operatic engagement outside. Well, first operatic engagement was a Tosca. It was conducted by Maestro Anton Coppola, and it was in Brooklyn. And I was right out of the studio and still a bit green. Um, and, you know, we're at the scene with the part where there's the love duet. You know, Puccini writes this beautiful music. Um, uh, and uh, you're singing to Tosca, and there's a part where he writes... Uh, so you're singing along, you know... I still haven't really opened my jaw yet, have I? Now, I'm not going to, because now what's coming is this. That beautiful legato phrase that Puccini wrote, and I destroyed it at my first rehearsal because I was young, I didn't understand. I figured, okay, it's going to a B-flat. I better open this up all the way. And I destroyed it. It was horrible. Okay, I'm on. Right, so I took it back to Tommy. Tommy says, close your mouth. And I said, Tom, I said, after all these years of, of you working with the big open jaw and no jaw lower and this and that, and now you want me to close? He said, trust me, lad. Try it. So I tried it. So we're here. Uh, so intero. Now, don't open the jaw. And, that's, and the phrase turns beautifully because you're leaving the jaw alone. That's what he wanted. That's what he really wanted. Tom tended to understate things. He'd say, close your jaw. But what he was really saying was, if you leave your jaw alone and you don't mess with it, then you'll maintain the legato line and the high note will still work. Um, that was my first lesson. And oh my God, this really does work. Uh, more Tosca. Reconi uh, Tarmonia. The F, the covered F that starts this aria is not the loudest note in the aria. You just started. Okay, so it doesn't have to be, right, crazy open. So we didn't sing it that way. You control the jaw, control it, control the cover, control the jaw spacing. I didn't really open that very much. I'm about halfway open. Uh, now... La Resente Amante Mia. Right, we're going on. Now the aria moves up to A natural. Now I'm going to open. Okay. There's a great one too. Look at that one. If you're too open, you won't get that to turn the right way. Um, and that turns again up to a covered F, but within a line, within a legato line. And that's what La Monica was trying to show us. And he was, he was teaching us. It was very difficult, 
to learn after, you know, all those years of very, very open jawed singing. Uh, what else? Ah, uh, Carmen. Okay, this is a, you know, a, a fairly uh, delicate aria, at least in the beginning anyway. So you can't pummel the F, nor would you want to. So there's no reason to open it. Again, it's that controlled kind of half jaw. I'm not going to open. Uh, in fact, that whole aria stays low. Again, a lot of these demonstrations I'm, I'm giving you are, a lot of it has to do with lower arias too, by the way. When you're down at the bottom, you cannot open. You can't. So you have to kind of learn how to sing with your jaw metered this way. Uh, follow Carmen along. Uh, he sings this whole in in intro. Uh, um, uh, Later on, when he goes, I'm going to open that high note. It's a high note. I'm going to open it because that's how I was trained. And it works every time. Uh, let's see. What else? Kellen McCreda is a great one. Now, this one, this aria is low all the time. You're all the way down at the bottom. It doesn't even open until you get to the first B flat. In my opinion, the way we were taught to do this. Um, you're low. This is low. I'm not opening. I'm really not opening. Uh, it's about half open. This aria doesn't even open until you get to the first high B flat. Edio, edio, non tornero. Edio, edio, non tornero. That one you open. Uh, my favorite Neapolitan song of all time. Tu canucchiagne. Right? Uh... This whole part, okay? This doesn't really open, again, you're never really gonna open the, vo open the jaw all the way until the high note, which is the interpolated A natural at the end of it. But the, at the beginning. That's all pretty half jaw, the way I see it. Now, when you come to the end, yeah, you're going to open. I'm going to open for the high note because that's how we were trained. That's where we pull out the power. We pull out the volume. That is the high note. That's the loud note. So, no, this misconception that oh, all the Lamonico and Maloki singers just opened all the way up and just blasted everything to hell is not correct. It never was correct. It's just propagated by the guys who don't understand how to do this. That's all. Uh, that's all, folks. I personally am praying for a vocal renaissance, as it were. I'm waiting for people to get tired of this anemic, low testosterone, pardon my French, one ball singing. I really, I mean, I'm, I've, I've heard a lifetime supply of it. I don't want to hear it anymore. And I'm hoping that eventually this will turn around. There's a couple of singers that are working today, two that I could name. I won't say their names on YouTube, but who I have great respect for. I even wrote one a letter and told him so because he was doing such a great job. Uh, but that's not the norm right now. And no, a mic won't fix you, okay? If you've got an anemic voice, all you're gonna have is an amplified anemic voice. Go for the big, go for the big guns. Sing out, full power, full testosterone, okay? Uh, if, I hope this helps. Uh, 
oh, was interesting. Please review the other videos that are on there. I've covered uh, how to shape your jaw, how to place your tongue for different vowels, uh, lip positions, breathing, uh, showing your teeth, all those things, depending on what it is that you're trying to accomplish. But those videos are all there. I thought this might be a helpful follow-up video to the first ones I put out there. And this is kind of a very, very end of the training, last, like I said, last thing, icing on the cake, last thing that Maestro Lamonico ever taught any of us was closed mouth singing. And no, it's not easy, but none of this is easy. You're never going to stand on stage, guys, and sing Nessun Dorma and not do any work. Sorry, doesn't work that way. Okay, you're going to do work. The difference is, is it the correct work or is it not? And you guys who keep calling me, telling me that you can't sing past F without your throat hurting because this is the way you were taught, I think you understand this. And I think there's a lot of you still out there that would love to be able to work with somebody who can explain this to you. Uh, my book remains full, thank God. Uh, there are that many people, that many singers out there who still want to do, still want to sing with that big, full, Italianate sound, which is the way it was supposed to be done all along. Um, anyway, uh, if you want to get a hold of me uh, for any reason, uh, I am on Facebook. Craig Suriani, vocal instructor, is the name of the page. I'm also on. Instagram, just put my name in, Craig Suriani. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, that'd be wonderful. Uh, nasty comments about, you know, people who don't believe in this or don't believe in the technique or don't want to sing this way. I get it. That's fine. Keep it to yourself. I don't need to hear it. Um, thank you for your time. And uh, we will talk again soon. Oh, I got some wind burn, I guess, today from the motorcycle. Oops. Sorry. Should have put some makeup on. Anyway, take care, folks. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.